Now that you have an understanding of how and why splitting occurs in the signals on an NMR spectrum, we're going to take a look at some slightly more complex splitting patterns. Now keep in mind, we're just going to look at the very basics of complex splitting and it can get much, much more complex than these examples that we're going to look at now. But to start, let's just take a look at this alkene proton and what you'll find is that Protons on alkenes tend to um, typically give complex splitting patterns, and we're going to see why this is. So this is the one highlighted here in red. And based on what we've already talked about, if we look at the adjacent carbons, we have an adjacent carbon here and an adjacent carbon here, and each of these contain one proton. So we would think well, we have those two protons, n equals 2, n plus 1 is 2 plus 1, or 3, and we would expect a triplet. But in reality, the signal for this proton appears something more like a quartet because there's four lines here. But what you should recognize is it's not a typical quartet, because with a typical quartet, you have the 1 to 3 to 3 to 1 intensities. Whereas this certainly doesn't follow that typical quartet pattern. So this should be an indication to you that you have complex splitting. So you get a signal, um, it's split, but it doesn't follow any of your typical patterns, doublet, triplet, quartet, quintet, and so forth. So one way to rationalize these signals here is um, by thinking about how it splits and drawing a splitting tree. And basically what we see here is that this proton, the one we're looking at in red, It's coupled to two very different types of protons. On the first carbon, this is an alkene proton. And then on the second carbon, we have an aldehyde proton. So on the second carbon here, we have this aldehyde proton. So what this does, rather than following the typical n plus 1 splitting, it follows a more complex, and let's label this as A and B, it follows an Na plus 1 times Nb plus 1. So we couple with, basically it couples with each of these protons individually. So in carbon A, there's one proton, so N equals 1. And then on carbon B, there's one proton, so N equals 1 here. So then we get essentially 2 times 2, which if we multiply that out, we get 4. And we do have 4 lines in the spectrum. Okay, but we, what we call this instead is we call this a doublet of doublets. because it couples with proton A and gives a doublet from A, and it couples with proton B and gives a doublet from B. So we can use a splitting tree to kind of think about um, the splitting that occurs here. 
So let's start out. Here's our proton. And think of it as just giving rise to a signal. Okay, then from there, that initial signal gets split by proton A into a doublet. So let's split that initial signal into two. Well then, that signal gets further split into another doublet thanks to B. So each of these gets split into signals because of B. And what we end up with are four lines in the spectrum which we see. Okay, here's another example that we're going to walk through. Again, it's involving an alkene, so we're going to deal with the complex splitting through it. Um, now, just a couple of simple protons on the spectrum. We, of course, have a CH3 group, which is this signal right here. Then we have this CH2 group, and on the adjacent carbon to it, so here's the adjacent carbon, there's just one proton. So that CH2 group will just split into a doublet, which is what we have right here. Okay, so the two that are a little bit trickier that we need to work with are the two protons on the alkenes. So we're going to take a look at this proton, which corresponds to this signal, and we're going to take a look at this proton, which corresponds to this quite complex signal here. So first, let's take a look at the simpler of the two this proton here. Okay, well this one, it's attached to this carbon, and then the adjacent atoms, we have a chlorine and a carbon, and on the adjacent carbon we have one proton. So because of that, this splits into just a doublet. And that's basically what we see here is our doublet. Now I will point out, um, and this is getting a little more advanced than what we're going to be talking about, but this actually, if you notice here, it almost looks like little tiny triplets. So you get your doublet, then they're further split into small triplets. The reason for that is it's actually further split into triplets because of these two through long-range coupling. So just our standard coupling splits it into a doublet and then this longer-range coupling um, splits it into very small triplets. So that's the splitting for that proton. Now let's look at our other alkene proton and see how it's split. Okay, so now we're interested in this one. Okay, so let's look at the adjacent carbons. We have an adjacent carbon here and an adjacent carbon here. So on the green adjacent carbon, there's one hydrogen. One plus one is two, that's a doublet. It splits into a doublet. On the blue adjacent carbon, there's two hydrogen. Two plus one is three, that splits into a triplet. 
So the overall splitting here is a doublet of triplets, 2 times 3, which you should see, um, or you'll see a maximum of 6 lines. And that's actually what we see here. So if you want to draw the splitting tree, let's start with, here's the signal for the proton that we start with. Okay, then through um, the green labeled doublet, that splits the signal into a doublet. And then those two doublet signals are further split into triplets. And that's how we get this complex splitting. One other thing you might run into that isn't necessarily complex splitting, but it gives you these large multiplets, is overlapping signals. This is especially common when you have protons that are chemically distinct, but their environments are so similar that they don't have very distinct chemical shifts, and they tend to overlap. For example, uh, we have iodohexane here, one iodohexane. Now, a couple of things that we can pick out. I'll just label these protons. Okay, well, proton, the CH2A, those are going to be the most downfield because they're connected to the I. So that's proton type A. Then we have B, which is still filling um, a little bit of pool downfield because of uh, the I. So that's the CH2 group here. And then also rather distinct is this methyl group on the end, which is this integration for three hydrogen. We'll make that F. But the issue we ran into is we have CH2C. D, and E, they are chemically distinct, but they're in very similar environments. And all three um, of those proton types, they overlap and give us this mess or multiplet for six hydrogen. So this is one other thing just to look out for if you have very similar proton types. They can overlap. Um, now as your instrument gets uh, better, where you get a stronger magnet and higher megahertz, you can start to separate these out with better instruments, but um, this particular NMR spectrum is a relatively low resolution.